There was one man who wasn't pleased to see you, wasn't there? Ask me to put it as one of a series of questions, I won't. Mr. President and members of the tribunal, an advocate can be confronted with two more formidable tasks than to select his closing arguments where there is great disparity between his appropriate time and his available material. In eight months, a short time as state trials go, we have introduced evidence which embraces as vast and varied a panorama of events as has ever been compressed within the framework of a litigation. It is impossible in summation to do more than outline with bold strokes the vital of this trial's mad and melancholy record, which will live as the historical text of the 20th century's shame and depravity. It is common to think of our own time as standing at the apex of civilization, from which the deficiencies of preceding ages may patronizingly be viewed in the light of what is assumed to be progress. The reality is that in the long perspective of history, the present century will not hold an admirable position unless its second half is to redeem its first. These two score years in this 20th century will be recorded in the Book of Years as one of the most bloody in all annals. Two world wars have left a legacy of dead which number more than all the army engaged in any war that made ancient or medieval history. No half century ever witnessed slaughter on such a scale. Such cruelties and inhumanity, such wholesale deportations of people Zealot Hess, <clears throat> before succumbing to wanderlust, was the engineer tending the party machinery, passing orders and propaganda down to the leadership corps, supervising every aspect of party activity, and maintaining the organization as a loyal and ready instrument of power. When apprehensions abroad threatened the success of the Nazi regime for conquest, it was the duplicitous Ribbentrop, the salesman of deception, who was detailed to pour wine on the troubled waters of suspicion by preaching the gospel of limited and peaceful intention. Title, the weak and willing tool, delivered the armed forces, the instrument of aggression, over to the party and directed them in executing its felonious design. Kaltenbrunner, the grand inquisitor, took up the bloody mantle of Hydrin to stifle opposition and terrorize compliance and buttress the power of national socialism on a foundation of guiltless corpses. It was Rosenberg, the intellectual high priest of the master race, who provided the doctrine of hatred, which gave the impetus for the annihilation of Jewry and put his infidel theories into practice against the eastern occupied territory which incited the populace to accept and assist the progressively savage operations of race purification. As Minister of Economics, Funk accelerated the pace of rearmament and as respectability, who in the early days provided the window dress, the bait for the hesitant, and whose wizardry later made it possible for Hitler to finance the colossal rearmament program and to do it secretly. Gernick, Hitler's legacy of defeat promoted the success of the Nazi aggression by Zinkar, spearhead of the Austrian Fifth Column, took over the government. It is against such a background 
that these defendants now ask this tribunal to say that they are not guilty of planning, executing, or conspiring to commit this long list of crimes and wrongs. They stand before the record of this trial as bloodstained Gloucester stood by the body of his slain king. He begged of the widow, as they beg of you, say I slew them not. And the queen replied, then say they were not slain, but dead they are. If you were to say of these men that they are not guilty, it would be as true to say that there has been no war, that there are no slaves, that there has been no crime.